because everybody's your prospect with PNC, how do you, I've, I've, I've been accused before. People have told me, and, I, and I've gotten better. This is when I was younger. Landon, you're always, you're always selling me, man. Like, so how do you build relationships? How do you walk that line? Do you have any like trips? I mean, obviously we, we you know, we can use our wisdom, but do you have any t- uh, tri- tips on how to like leverage your network, but also not be prospecting everybody all the time? And, and what's that line of working your warm market? And how do you feel that out? Is there anything you could share? I have a three-step system. Um, oh, okay. That I usually do system, before dude. I pitch somebody, whether it's a, a prospect or an agent or any, anyone. Uh, so I'm going to have three 20 minute conversations with them about something personal or just personal. Mm. So like, uh, Cody the other day was at a Duke game. You know, if I didn't know Cody and I saw that, I would watch, I'm not a Duke fan. So, uh, I would reach out and say, oh man, I cannot believe you're a Duke fan. This, if I wanted to build my relationship with Cody, I would have sent that and had a 20 minute conversation about nothing. And then after I have three of those, maybe four of those, if I decide I want to work with you or I want your business, that's when I go into it. Because by that time, we've already built the relationship with for an hour. We've had three separate conversations that lasted a minute. And we're now best friends. Or I want to be your best friend. And then I'm going, you know, I'm going to want to work with you or I'm going to want your business. That's a little better than spamming somebody to death. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I do. And I, I'm like, I'm picky with it. You know, I have some people, you know, I want to make sure like with Pete here, I knew that I wanted to work with Pete. You know, it wasn't a recruiting thing. It was, look, I want to work with you. We need yeah. to do this. And yeah. this is a great place. Come so, hang out. Worst case, we get to hang out for a few days, you know? So uh, that's really I, what it was. I like surrounding myself and bringing on people that I want to spend time with. I like that. I'm going to start thinking through that when I'm, when I'm trying to build a relationship with someone in general, that's solid. Uh, so you, you don't just, you know, throw out a company in a comp level and, and say they're stupid if they don't join your team. You know what I mean? Come on. <laughs> no. That doesn't work. <laughs> no. I've never recruited on comp or contracts or anything else. So uh, you don't I get on LinkedIn and just fire out message well, after message. If that's the value, you can always find something better. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's yeah. When, you know when does the madness end? There's only so far that you can go, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, there's and there always is something better somewhere, you know. And and the people who are constantly looking for it are going to find a reason to go here or there or do this or that. But, but if you have that relationship with them and you've maintained it, you can't put a price on that. That's good. Who, who, who's the one person that you have the best relationship with that we know, but that I didn't know that? Hmm. Taylor. I don't know if you know that or not. Taylor. Yeah. Good friend of mine. I That's love him. Good. I love me some Dobby. Uh, he's dude. a good friend of mine. Um, Those are good dudes good, right there. Good guys, man. Yeah, really good. Um, I'm trying to think outside of it. Mike Newton's a good friend of mine. Uh, oh, I didn't know Mike, that. He's also a state fan, so, you know, he's one up on you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, but Taylor and Mike, and then Michael and uh, Michael McCormick, too. You know, they're all great dudes and stuff, and I love talking to them. And, and we can talk shop a little bit more, too, because they're, you know, PNC as well. So, yeah. sometimes when I start rambling about PNC, life agents will just – start to look confused and don't know my terms and stuff and everything with it. So it's, it's nice to have somebody in the independent market that I can talk to about, you know, PNC and stuff. Well, um, Pete, you said that, um, I don't know if this was on the podcast or before, but Jared was, was got a, got a policy out of the bartender the other day, which, which is, which is ha ha. That's funny, but really that's a skill to be able to get into a real conversation with a human being as you're, you're crossing. Do you have any, like icebreakers that you typically use or is there any like little tricks that you've, I mean, not that we're always selling people, but what, what have you found that's, that's worked well in those situations, you know? Make somebody else talk. Okay. Don't talk about yourself. Mm. What do you do? Where are you from? How'd you get here? Nice to meet you. You know, you know, what is, are you gonna be working here next year? Are you gonna be doing this next year? You know, who do you have your, who do you have your insurance with? Are you, are you happy with that? Um, I try to make somebody else talk as much as possible. I think really not to give away your trade secrets, but Jared used like, uh, it was almost like a survey approach. So we were just sitting there like eating <laughs> and he was like, Hey man, come here for a second. <laughs> Guy walked over, you know, and he asked him like three or four questions and he was like, just out of curiosity, where do you, where do you have your auto insurance or something like that? And the guy said like state farm or progressive or something. He's like, do you shop it? Yeah, every once in a while, where, you know, whatever. He was like, would you like me to be your agent? 
And the guy was like, sure. That's I was like, oh my God. <laughs> You should have you should have got that on video, Pete. I know, I know. Next time we're filming either the Uber ride or dinner, or you just need a GoPro attached to your head. At there all we time. go. That's <laughs> where it's, uh, it, it's hard for me to talk about a process because really, like, I'll spend a few minutes and like read the person, you know, because different people are different. If I've got this alpha male that I'm getting ready to pitch, you know, I'm not going to say that to the same I would as a 20 year old guy, mm -hmm. you know, just the still in college you know i'm not gonna i really get a read on the person and then go into my questions and just i wing it man right but you did you weren't afraid to ask for the business either which is really i think half the battle you know it's well, awesome you gotta have it by law it might as well be with me yeah. that's true that's, that's true. right dude that's right that, that that's that's your motto hey we've considered i want to get your guys's opinion because that because i know you'd be phenomenal fits for it we're considering doing like a power networking retreat Ooh, and, nice. And, and by invite only. I think that's a great idea. You bring a lot of, you know, key people into the same room, like yep. craziness is going to happen. Dude, and for Pete, real. I think that's a great idea, Cody, too, because like so many people are either on an island in this industry themselves, unless they go to like 8% Nation or something like that, right? They're on an island either themselves or even on an island within their own organization. Right. They stay so closed off to everybody else, which is so silly. Um, so I, I think that's awesome. If you got like one or two nuggets in something like that, it's worth it'll pay dividends in the future. Exactly. Dude, and, and you know what? Uh I flew red eye to 10X3 and Yes. And I don't know who, who reached out to who, but but I knew you were there. And uh, we, we got to see each other the last day at 10X3 in Miami. I flew red eye, got there like seven AM barely got tickets, you know, and, and, uh, Pete was down on the floor, you know, uh, at, at the, probably the biggest conference in the world, you know, so this, this dude, both of them power networker and you know, the, Pete's always, I can tell you believe in events, man. Cause you, you guys have always supported 8%. You brought it up several times today. You, you, you show up, you know, you guys were both there this past year, which is, which is humbling and awesome and really cool. Um, what, what is it about events that, that, that you show up? I, th I think one from a networking perspective, like is an absolute no brainer. I mean, you mentioned 10 X, right. Or even yours, where else are you going to get a thousand other people or in the case of 10 X, like 30,000 people, exactly. right. That you could possibly network with. It's so silly to think like, I'll give you an example of ROI, right. On, on 10 X. Mm. So I, I paid, I went, it was my birthday my 30th birthday that weekend. Wow. And I was at growth con like a weirdo. <laughs> so that, you know, that's one, I don't really care, but that's awesome. um, I paid probably a total of $5,000 between ticket, plane ride, right? Whatever. I think I wrote nine or 10 policies right from it. So there's immediate ROI. I found my marketing team and I recruited six agents. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> duh, what? you know, so why wouldn't you go back to something like that oh. every single year or go multiple times a year to all different ones? Like the money yeah. doesn't matter. I don't want to like come off pretentious, but like, man, it's like five grand to make exponentially more in the future. You know? Yeah. I, I, I was a slacker because I flew red eye. I, I, did, I didn't sell. I didn't. I didn't do anything while I was there except for see, <laughs> see you. You, you had a lot of other things going on beforehand, though. <laughs> That's true. Thanks, bro. Soak yeah. it in. That's crazy. So who'd you sell policies to? Dude, I sold policies to people. So my now fiance, who was my girlfriend at the time, went to like the ladies night, right? And she met like three or four women and naturally the women want to go out. So they brought all the men. I closed all of them. <laughs> what did you sell? It took me a couple of weeks to like get on, you know, Skype calls and do the apps and stuff. But eventually they all got a policy. That's, That's awesome. Awesome, dude. Man. Well, I mean, I, I told you, I, I may have said this before, but it's been a while. I had a revelation the other day when I went to the Dallas game with you guys. Yeah. And I, there's 100,000 people in this stadium. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, every single one of these people have home insurance, auto insurance. A lot of them have life insurance. And then I'm like, oh, that's why all these 23 year old kids are making six figures and quitting college to go sell right. insurance. You right. know what I mean? Like I, in, and whenever I was in college, we walked right past the insurance booth and laughed at it. I'm not going to insurance. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So he, he was one of those Landon, guys. Landon, to your point too, like 
from a mindset perspective too, like I, I get so upset when like both slightly angry and like emotionally upset when an agent's like down in the dumps, we're, we're, we're in the only industry where you can sell anybody. Yeah. You're yeah. not selling Ferraris or laptops or whatever. Like yeah. anybody is your prospect. That's yeah. so baffling, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, and the True. insurance premium that's coming out per head in that stadium, when you when you take the family and the home and the auto and the boats and the rentals and the kids and the health, it's like, good grief. That's like, there's just, I just remember looking at those numbers and being like, oh my gosh, that's why I'm in the right industry. Cause, I, cause I'm not, I'm not, I'm not licensed. I'm not an insurance agent. I'm just a marketing guy before I met that guy. And I used to tell people there's only two industries I don't want to touch and it's insurance and real estate, you know? And so now here I am in the insurance industry and just good grief, the opportunity. So, so we'll, uh, sometimes uh, me and my agents will go to lunch together and stuff. And on the way there, you know, we'll be sitting in the stoplight and I'll tell them like, you know, just look at all that money right now. Just waiting yeah. for you to go get it. Hey, you love this video and you want some brain food. I got five books that every new insurance agent should read. Go watch that, grab the books, see you over there. When you read a book, when you go to an event, when you listen to a book, when you go to a mastermind, when you buy a university,